As promised, I said I would update you on my visit to Alex Belfield. So I went to visit Alex in his new prison, HMP Earlstoke, and uh, where he'd been moved very abruptly after my last visit to him in his last prison. So you get given about, well, no notice whatsoever and then moved to prison. So he's now at HMP Earlstoke. And just to repeat his prisoner number, if it's helpful to you, A4747EW. And I'll repeat that again at the end and try and put it in the comments of this video. Um, so I promised to go and see him and this time I took lovely Mark with me. First thing, he is in a Cat C male prison. So as uh, should be the case by now, Alex should be in a Category D prison. And Category D would be the most kind of casual kind of prison where you are allowed to go home on a kind of semi-regular basis. There's far less kind of prison structure and far less being banged up in your cell for 12 hours at a time or however long it is. So Alex should rightfully now be in a category D prison, is still being held in a category C, uh, which feels particularly punitive given that he was put there for the crime of um, making a few videos online. And clearly those who don't support Alex or just um, would like to say unkind things uh, would clarify what he was actually charged with. And please feel free to do that in the comments section. It wouldn't change my opinion of Alex because I know him personally. The thing about uh, the prison stock that the government has at the moment is they have run out of space. So you may have heard that some people have had sentences reduced because the prisons across the UK don't have space. And then when you think about allocation per category, you need space for certain categories. And the British prison system has run out of space for category B prisoners, which are held under a tighter level of security, a tighter prison regimen. And what's needing to happen is that category C prisons, like where Alex is, are needing to house category B prisoners because cat Bs have run out of space. So security measures are being increased at cat C prisons in order to accommodate cat B prisoners. And then of course you've got Bs in Cs and all the rest of it. And what it means as well is you end up with more time locked in cells because the prisons and the staff are struggling to manage the very difficult situation that they're up against. So that's the kind of background to the B, C, category thing and the idea that Alex should be a category D because then he will have much more freedom. He's also a very, very long way from home. One of the ideas of prison is that you are kept within, I believe, uh, correct me here if you know the prison system much better than I do, 120 miles from your home in order that you can be visited, that it's not so expensive for people to visit you and to give you some sense, I'm assuming, of hope. Uh, Alex is much further away um, from his home than that and his big concern is for his parents because they come to visit him. He's now a very long way away and I can tell you uh, in terms of visiting that prison it is way at the back of nowhere. You're winding roads. I mean I'm from that part of the country so it's kind of normal for me but if I lived let's say in Nottingham or somewhere or lived in a city getting to that prison would be a very strange thing because you really do feel a bit like you're in the countryside. The other really strange thing about his new prison, and this is the difference with prison stock, his last prison was a fab kind of new prison, super modern, super glass, super designed around being light and airy and bright. This prison is the opposite of that. It's not Belmarsh where I've spent some time, not yet at his Majesty's pleasure, but uh, it is just depressingly awful. It feels like the visitor area is like a village hall slash horrible primary school that got run down and got forgotten about after the war slash community centre that no one ever uses anymore and doesn't get any budget with really kind of bleh, 
kind of children's artwork on the wall that fails to make it jolly at all. And it's not about the visitor area because clearly you're allowed to go in and that's a great thing. To the point, Alex. Alex is still doing remarkably brilliantly. And I say that because it amazes me, you know, and this is not in any way comparable, in any way. But I tried to be in quarantine, or as I called it, prison quarantine in Australia, because I wanted to go over there in lockdown and expose the government. But, and I managed two days in a nice apartment on my own, which I signed up for and was being paid to be there. So like I say, no comparison other than I managed two days on my own. So I do not know how he has managed all of this time so far. I have no idea how he's coped with it so brilliantly. And now we are in April. So he still has another 15 months to go. And that's really why I wanted to talk about this is, and obviously this is all from an outsider's perspective, Obviously, I don't know prisons like any of you who've spent time inside or are prison staff. And obviously, I'm not Alex, nor am I a close family member. But there really is this kind of overwhelming realisation that despite having done so long already, you still have 15 months to go with no sign of being allowed to go cat D, despite the fact that procedurally, structurally, historically, you know, it, a prisoner with uh, a record like Alex's would be allowed to go to Cat D. There was no sign of that happening for Alex. And of course, someone like me, someone like him, you can't have any trust in any part of the system, but you particularly don't trust that you will be given the privilege of going to a lesser category prison because the law is not the law, it's whatever the powerful decide it is. And that's before you get to the point that he's even in there in the first place. Because you will never get your head around being in prison when there's no reason for you to be there. So there's a lovely guy in Alex's prison now, uh, and I could see him moving around, and he's in there because, uh, you know, somebody didn't end up too well off after a meeting with him. But when you can rationalise being in prison because you did something wrong, I think that's easier than being in prison because you made a few videos and made enemies of the wrong people. But it's just the amount of time left. That's the real gut punch. It isn't, it seems, the fact that he was moved at a moment's notice after I was last in. It isn't that he's been moved to a much shittier prison. It isn't that he can't get Cat D because the system won't allow him because, you know, he's getting special punishment because he's Alex Belfield and certain people have an interest in seeing him being done down. It isn't just that visiting is so depressing for everybody and it isn't just that he's a very, very long way from his mum and dad who were elderly. It's the sheer amount of time left and the knowledge that you can't get time back in life. But I don't want to kind of overstate the positive because that's my natural inclination, isn't it? It's to be upbeat and positive and find the good because I'm just built that way because we have to if we're going to get through this stuff. But I can say a few things that I find entirely hopeful. And the first is that they haven't broken him. And I say yet, because there is this huge amount of time to go. And now he's being held in, you know, so he was going to go to get locked up then from 4pm until 9, 10am the next morning. It, it's not just that. But they haven't broken him yet. And every day is a day less. You know, that's pretty much all I say to Alex. And I can hear myself being boring. And and I and I think, right, I have something interesting to say, but don't be too interesting. Don't, you know, be like, oh, yeah, we were out last night at dinner, da, 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 because you don't want to be like, oh, my life's great. Or I don't want to talk about, oh, yeah, the tour is great and it's selling out and isn't that great. I don't talk about that either. I try and be bland and vanilla, but understanding, but have some interesting things to say that are just 
interesting for both of us that relate to things that he might be interested in as well. But every day is a day less. And the big win, the, the prize, the finish line, isn't just the getting out, which has to come. Like even if all you do is breathe every day, the end has to come. The genius thing is, if you make it out of there, vaguely sane, you win. You win. They don't. The powerful that wanted you there, Jeremy Vine crying in court because he was terrified of Alex Belfield, the Jimmy Savile of stalking or trolling or whatever the phrase was. I don't want to repeat it accurately because, you know, I refuse to give that man any more attention than he already craves. All he has to do to win is make it out. And I think that's more than I might be able to achieve, but I think Alex Belfield is going to achieve it. And he still has this massive drive, and we talk about what will happen when he gets out and how amazing that will be for the people that do support him. It will be amazing. And if you don't support him, that's always fine because no one's trying to persuade you to. Like, carry on. Don't support. Just go over there and don't support. And I think the other thing is, and this is many levels back now from Alex and all the rest of it, is just that whole, it makes no sense whatsoever. Prison doesn't really make that much sense anymore to me because those guys inside there, I see their girlfriends and their wives and their kids trying to pay a visit and trying to be cheerpy and trying to be like kind and buy food and, you know, have a good visit. But the visits are, you know, it's punitive on everybody. And I think about the old me going, well, prison's supposed to be tough and they shouldn't be allowed TVs and it's supposed to be prison. And then I look now and I think if this is all some sort of, it's like sci-fi almost. These are the guys that are being punished. Here's the guys watching the people being punished. Here's the girlfriends of the people being punished also being punished. Here's the children of the girlfriends also being punished by the system that's showing it punishes people. And meanwhile out there, you've got MPs getting their cocks out on Grindr and blackmail, blackmail and worse. You've got Michelle Moan, who stole nine, 29 million off the taxpayer. You've got all the crime rackets who are the people and the powerful. You've got Epstein, you've got Clinton's dead body count. And then you look at these men in this cat sea, crappy village hall, and you go, none of this makes any sense whatsoever. So um, I want to say a couple of things. Firstly, thank you to everybody uh, inside prison, all the lovely inmates who serve food, who, who brought the food out to us, who, you know, I get to have little chats with and everybody was being watched. So the table I got for the visit was Alex, was the one that's the closest supervision table next to the prison staff. Uh, behind the food, they were told to be on their best behaviour. There was someone supervising the lads behind there so that they wouldn't be able to just chit chat with me. So my visit was at a higher level of supervision than the last time where I had a lovely time meeting pretty much everyone in the prison and getting to do pictures with Alex. <laughs> so <laughs> naughty me. Uh, but all the lads I met uh, inside, um, thank you very much for all your kind words. And um, and mostly, I suppose, um, to say that Alex, I, I believe he's going to make it through this. I believe he will make it through the other side. And I know that that's the biggest win of all. Um, and also, I think just quietly, just those people, I see families going to visit their people inside, wives and girlfriends and parents of either the wives and girlfriends or the lads inside. And I sit and I hear them say, oh no, I've been hundreds of times. When the guards ask, oh, have you been before? I've been hundreds of times. And I tell you what, I'm so admiring of all the family that stick by their people when they're inside and there is something really about that, about family rate relationships that endure tests that most family relationships might not. And I come away with a whole appreciation for that. You know, I, I look at those families and think, oh, 
families, some families really do stick together through thick and thin. So that's the, the kind of download. And uh, ultimately, so Alex's dog is doing fine. He's in between his mum and dad and also his sisters, but uh, Alex's dog is doing great. Um, Alex's mum and dad get to visit and they go down for a weekend, which is better for them because of the journey. And I guess the thing that still gets Alex through is the discipline of your letters, is the discipline of the thought of being out and is that sort of a certainty about not being broken, which I find really, really admirable and um, is a lesson. It's very surprising when you know Alex like I do in a velvet jacket and a sparkly cuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you see him there in his prison thing with his prison band on because he's the prisoner and I'm the visitor and he's still hanging on in there and you think, oh, you know. You're actually a lot tougher than, than I realised, uh, but he's still hanging on in there. So just to repeat, um, his prisoner number is A4747EW. He is at the new prison and you can email a prisoner. So there's a system for that. Email a prisoner and request a reply. You can write into the prison Um and about 15 months from now, Alex should be out. And the big hope would be um, that the system itself is not able to keep holding him at a cat C at a time when prisons are full and they need those cat C places, that he will be allowed to go to a cat D prison near his home address and to serve out the rest of these ridiculous 15 months in a way that is much more healthy and much more, um, uh, and financially for the state, a much more sensible solution. And in terms of allowing Alex to serve time and see his parents um, as they get older, a much more sensible solution for everybody. Uh, but for now, for me, uh, to all the prison staff, uh, to all the lads uh, at Alex's prison, and to all their families, um, I wish you every good thing. I'll see you somewhere on the road.